so yeah, I was I was going through a lot of uh, viewers games. Uh, there was one guy, Sam the Beast, who actually uh, played a very interesting game, but um, unfortunately his opponent's moves weren't optimal. Um, so I chose to, cho to look at this one because uh, I think um, there are some interesting strategical uh, topics we, we can discuss, um, some interesting ideas for both sides, uh, some swings you know, in, uh, in assessment throughout the game, but uh, overall an, quite an interesting uh, interesting battle so with that being said white hectagon versus no greatness d4 knight f6 c4 e6 wait should we put uh, this on training let's put it on training e6 knight c3 bishop b4 okay um how is this uh, opening called yes 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 the name the name though uh, then the, the name is though. I think uh, Queen's Indian is with b6 uh, with bishop b4 included. But yeah, at, at the moment, I think we, we should just call it the name though. Um, queen to c2. And now, I think already black made a slight inaccuracy. He took on c3 immediately, yeah. which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, I think we should wait for, uh, for, for white to provoke that move with a3, uh, lose a tempo in the meantime. And also, whenever you're playing a3, very often you're um, weakening the light squares, especially this guy on b3. And um, black has this extra option, extra idea of playing a5, a4 uh, in certain situations and actually blocking the pawn on uh, b2. So taking on c3 directly doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, doesn't make sense at all actually and uh, it's just a loss of tempo you're giving your um, bishop pair for no reason unprovoked and uh, white is going to uh, enjoy a very stable long-term advantage in the upcoming uh, moves and, and middle game so bishop takes c3 i think one of the main lines is castle um, there is also c5 in this position taking advantage of the fact that the queen is not on the d file anymore, not supporting um, d5. Plenty, plenty of ideas. d5, I think, is also an option. d6, a lot, a lot of moves, but bishop c3 is definitely not one of them. So whenever you uh, have the option of taking this type of exchanging decisions, make sure, I mean, if they're unprovoked, ask yourself, do I ha actually have to do it? You know. Um, if they are provoked, then of course you're going to have to take a decision at that moment. But black didn't have to do it right now. Knight e4. I knew he was going to play that. Hmm? I knew he was going to play that. He's he, just going to move the back to knight. To be honest, uh, I think his thought process was that basically he just wasn't prepared against queen c2. And he wanted to. Uh, obtain some sort of blockade, some, uh, some sort of grip on these light squares in the center. So right now, for example, if you go castle, I can also play e4, which is not a very good move, to be honest. Uh, it's not a good move at all, because after bishop takes e3, you have to take back with the b-pawn, and then, OK, maybe I can go c5. Actually, I might even be able to go c5 uh, directly, or d5. Your pawns uh, and your structure is a little bit loose. Uh, but I think black simply just that didn't want to allow this central expansion by white. So that's why he took bishop takes c3 and forcefully planted the knight in the center. The problem is that that knight is not going to uh, have such a long life there. You know, I'm going to be able to uh, just uh, take it out with a move such as f3 in the future. Um, it's, it's not that difficult, actually. So he played knight e4, queen c2, f5, of course. Knight to f3, mm, another inaccuracy, I would say. I, th I think I should, I should play something like e3 first. I don't want to commit my knight to a certain position immediately because I want to have this extra option. I want to play bishop d3, knight e2, and f3. And I want to take your knight away. And uh, after that, I'm going to uh, find a placement for this bishop. Potentially after e4, 
after you move your knight, I'm going to play e4 and then bishop e3 or something like that. Or the second option would be to play b4 and uh, bishop b2, depending on how you are going to arrange your pieces. But these are the type of knight f3 is, I would say, a very um, natural automatic move, automatic developing move, uh, which sometimes is not the best option. So always, always... Um, assess your possibilities because um, very often you will you will find quite interesting ideas that perhaps you are not thinking about um, naturally and uh, I, I mean I understand the fact that he didn't want to play e3 immediately because he didn't want to close up his bishop but I think uh, e3 bishop d3 knight e2 keeping that square for the knight f3 is important and I think white would have had a very very strong advantage uh, after knight f3 is going to be a little bit more difficult to take the knight away from the center, uh, the knight from e4. Castle, e3, knight to c6. That's not the most natural uh, placement for the knight either. Generally, you want to play d6, b6, bishop b7. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Knight, oops. This knight goes to d7 generally, potentially to f6, and then um, supporting the other knight on e4. Knight, in, knight on c6 is also possible. The problem is uh, he's not going to have a bright future afterwards, um, and he's also going to incommodate this bishop on c8, because whenever I put it on b7, which is its natural position uh, in this type of structure, this diagonal is clogged, right, with the knight on c6. That's why you want to keep the knight to d7. Um, I don't like this knight c6. Obviously, it's, he's fighting against the natural bishop d3. Because right now, after knight b4, white would have some problems, right? But knight b4 is easy to stop. And um, I don't even have to put my bishop to d3. That's not necessarily how I'm going to um, carry out the plan of evicting your knight from e4. Usually I'm going to play bishop e2, castle, move the knight, and then f3 once again. But he played a3 with the idea to play bishop d3, b6, bishop d3, and now the knight has to go back. Yeah, You're not in time to defend that knight. That's why knight c6 was uh, just a loss of tempo. You should have played b6 and bishop b7 to try to defend that knight as, for as long as possible. Knight to g5, b4, very aggressive. Very aggressive view. I mean, natural plan, generally. Um, the problem is, there's a clear problem. Uh, somebody from the audience maybe can try to explain it to me. Clear strategical problem. And what should have been done in this position for White, from White's perspective? And it's not complicated at all. It's very, very straightforward. Yes. Um, do something about it, yeah? Not leave it there, uh, hanging. Because uh, after b4, knight takes f3, um, I, I think this was played. The stru white structure, white's damage structure, um, is, is, is probably going to give black the advantage. Um, I think White was a just simply a very aggressive player, to be honest. And uh, he predicted this type of position, and he was going to play, as in the game, bishop b2, long castle, and try to uh, make use of the open g file. The problem is, uh, from an objective point of view, the position is not very good. So in this position, he should have just played natural moves, such as... Play for, for the long term. Because white has a very, very powerful advantage, and that is strategical advantage. Hmm? He has more space. Uh, he has some space, yeah. He has yeah. More pieces developed. Um, more pieces developed? I don't know about that. Uh, no, I don't think he has more pieces developed. Actually, I think they're more or less. Black is already castled. Uh, 
I mean, the queen on c2, or you can say is developed or not. I mean, from d1 is also potentially developed because I'm defending the f3 knight. Um, but no, that's not his biggest trump, biggest advantage in the position. Knight on c6 is not Nope. It's a very typical advantage for this uh, opening. It's a long-term advantage. It's not the initiative. Yes. Thank you. The bishop pair, of course. Long-term advantage. Yeah? The bishop pair. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an advantage that in order to achieve a certain uh, level of chess understanding, you kind of have to tackle it. You know, very often uh, people underestimate the bishop pair. But I think it's a very, very valuable strategical trump. And if you can take it and if you can uh, handle it well and if you can hold it in certain positions, uh, then most probably you're going to be able to build a very powerful, powerful advantage. So b4 is a mistake. He should have just simply taken on g5. Queen takes g5, short castle, bishop b7, and now maybe just f3. Close the diagonal. It's very important not to get checkmated, obviously. And then I can go b4, bishop d2, build my space advantage on the queen side. You're simply not going to have any sort of uh, counterplay on the king side. And slowly, slowly, I'm going to start pushing your pieces back. Um, if you move this knight, maybe at the right time, I'm even going to try to open up the center with e4 and then block your bishop with d5 potentially. Um, I can tell you from my own experience, these positions, this type of structures and uh, black fighting against the bishop pair is very, very unpleasant. So he played b4, not understanding the plan. Knight takes f3, g takes f3, bishop to b7, bishop b2. Again, I mean, he was kind of playing to his own style. And his own style is obviously very aggressive. He just wants to checkmate his opponent. The problem is, strategically, is not very sound. Knight to e7, e4, f takes e4, f takes e4. And we reach this position. What should black do? I, th I think this is what uh, black did in the position, yeah? Attack the queen side, interesting. That's, that's definitely something that could, uh, could come up. Knight to g6. Knight, yeah, knight to g6, of course. I, I mean, I, I those weak squares, weak dark squares on, on the king side, yeah? Um, queen, king side castle is not possible because knight f4, queen g5, that some checkmates will come on the board very quickly. Um, so you kind of have to go on the king side, on the queen side, sorry. This is what he did. And now uh, I think he made a mistake, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see what he did. Uh, yes, he played the move d5, which I certainly don't understand. What I do kind of understand, he's trying to block the bishop on b2, uh, but in the same time, he's also blocking the bishop on b7. And more importantly, you're giving me the option of opening this diagonal. Um, what should have been played by black? A few options, a few uh, candidate moves tied up to some, some plans, I, I would like to know. Queen to g5 is surely one of them, but uh, that's simply just a check, right? right? Are we doing anything after that? So queen g5, king h, king b1. Generally, um, the, the, I mean, in this, especially in this uh, situation, the threat is more unpleasant than the execution. Yeah? And we have to leave that check in the air. Yeah? 
The king on c1 is, is, is a little bit uncomfortable, and he's going to have to lose a tempo with king b1. We shouldn't force him to lose that tempo. Why wouldn't we play this move first then? Queen to h4. It attacks the f2 pawn. It also stops white from expanding with the move h4. And overall, it's taking control over the dark squares on the king side, which is extremely important. Strategically, black is definitely better. Um, white does have some uh, potential for, for, for dynamics in the position if he manages to open up his bishops. But it's going to be very difficult to, to, to do that. Black is just playing with, with tempo. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Maybe play uh, if you go something like rook d2. I can even go something like rook f3. The idea to go rook f8. Block your position there. Block your position on the king side. Not allow you to, to create any counterplay and then slowly, slowly uh, my strategical trumps should play a huge part and win the game. So instead of that, he played the move d5, which I certainly don't find very appealing and uh, not very clever. Huh? Can he just bury his bishop on b7? He's burying the bishop on b7. He's also burying the bishop on b2, which I would assume that was kind of his overall plan, at least strategical idea. But uh, yeah, more importantly, he's blocking his own bishop and he's also allowing me to play e5 at the right moment and open up this important diagonal that's going to allow me to create a lot of counterplay. So in this position, I think uh, white kind of returned the favor a little bit and uh, played, uh, played an inaccuracy of his own. I think c takes d5. Did he play this? No, he played e takes d5 first. Um, I think c takes d5 would have been better. C, e ta c takes d5, e takes d5, and then e5. e5 absolutely. Um, I think e5 is enough. That pass pawn in the center is going to be extremely powerful. Now, opening up the, uh, the b1h7 diagonal is also very influential, and uh, I think white is starting to be better okay, so already. Rook to g1 is coming. Of course, um, white still has his own problems, like the bishop on b2, and uh, potentially after an exchange of this bishop with the knight on g6, obviously the remaining pieces are probably going to favor black, the remaining opposite color bishops because black is going probably going to be able to activate it via a6 c4 or even c8 f5 after the exchange of these two uh, pieces so even if you gain a pawn as white you're still going to have some problems strategically yeah um, nevertheless it's it's a much better position than what he had a few moves ago um, when he was almost losing I mean, after castle, if he, if, he, if he plays queen h4, I think objectively is losing. So he played d5. e takes d5. Very similar position to, uh, to the one with the pawn on e5, but we just don't have the pawn on e5 in this position. So we have the pawn on c4, which is a, uh, a worse version, a clearly worse version. Rook to g1. Knight to f. Yeah, <laughs> this was a very strange move. So white is not really threatening anything uh, besides just winning a pawn on g6, which he could have done, I think, uh, at this moment as well. So he plays this move, rook g1, and knight f4. No. No, knight f4 is a, is, is a clear mistake. The knight is not going to do anything on f4. The knight is not going to play such a huge part in, in, in your attack, and you're just simply giving me a pawn. I think what black should have understood is that 
he wants the exchange of the bishop on d3 with the knight on g6. Eliminate the bishop pair, leave white with the bad bishop on b2, and uh, okay, I'm going to lose a pawn, but that's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah? Uh, the ensuing position with opposite, opposite color bishops and heavy pieces on the board. Well, actually, whenever we have opposite, opposite color bishops and heavy pieces on the board, which are the two main factors of assessment? The person attacking has the advantage. Who has the initiative? Absolutely. That's one of them. And the second most important? I mean, depending on the position. Uh, that kind of plays a part into the initiative, uh, in, into the initiative factor. Yeah, king safety. If your king is not safe, then you're probably in trouble. Um, the difference between the bishops. So who has the initiative and which bishop is better? In this case, probably this bishop on b7 is going to be better. Because once again, it's going to be much easier to get to your king and it's, mu it's going to be much easier to uh, get him active. So actually after queen h4, I th think black still has the advantage for the simple fact that the structure is just intolerable for white. It's terrible. Very ugly structure. So unfortunately, knight f4 came as a surprise to me. No greatness played, uh, played not so great. Knight bishop takes h7, king h8, king b1. Good prophylaxis. The king on c1 was definitely uh, quite unstable, so on b1 is much more safe. And this is a good move or a bad move? D takes c4. It looks bad. Looks bad, but why? The question is why, and, and, and if it is bad, then we have to punish it. Absolutely. Uh, this move just simply loses on the spot. After d5, you can basically resign. I mean, you're opening up my monster. You got greedy. Um, you try to uh, take, get your pawn back because I cannot take on c4 because your bishop on h7 is hanging. The problem is this d5 is just killing. Game over. Finito. No, as... as at all costs, you should have tried to stop me from opening my dark square bishop. So no greatness, not very well played. Did never open your, uh, your opponent's strongest piece. Uh, I guess that could be made a rule. Um, knight d3. And now we're just going to see some checkmates coming on the board. Nice little sacrifice. But obviously, the king is completely naked. C takes d3, queen takes d3, and checkmates are coming on the board. Queen f5, queen e6, king f8, rook to g8, and that's all she wrote. Okay, very interesting game, uh, strategically flawed, tactically quite, quite sharp. Um, white, you know, pounded. Uh, pounded Black's position when he had the opportunity strategically, mm, not, not very sound, but it happens. Anyway, an interesting game. Let's go to the second one, because I have another one prepared for this lesson. I think the player as Black submitted it, Philip something. Um, I, don't, I don't know who he's playing. It's not written anywhere around here at the end so i think it's philip as black so philip if you're watching this know that we're watching your game all right so let's see e4 d5 um e5 e takes d5 obviously is the main line and leads to the scandinavian e5 and now black played e6 which i think is already i mean an inaccuracy why would we play e6 Why would we go into a French without getting our bishop out? Without getting our light square bishop, which is the bad bishop in the French, out, right? 
Let's compare it to the Kerakan. Immediately bishop, e5, bishop f5 comes on the board. We can get the same thing, basically, after d5, e5, bishop f5, and let's say white is going to go d4. Now, very often in the Karakan, the pawn from c6 actually goes to c5, and he's losing what tem one tempo. Um, in this particular case, we can play e6, and then next move play c5. We're not losing a tempo, yeah? So we're basically playing a favorable version of the Karakan. Uh, that's why for white e5 is just a mistake. You should accept the Scandinavian, play e takes d5, um, queen takes d5 or knight f6, grab, grab the space advantage in the center and just play a long game. e5 is not the right solution. And e6 is another inaccuracy. Well, right now we just have a typical French, typical advanced French. Unfortunately, if I remember correctly, black played a bad move here. Knight c6. The best move is? C5. C5, of course. We're attacking the pawn chain, right? We're attacking the pawn chain. We're uh, grabbing some space on the queen side as black. White is going to have space advantage on the king side. So it's going to be a battle between the expansion, black's ex expansion on the queen side, white's expansion on the king side, and uh, trying to checkmate the black king. Uh, I'm just going to try to break through with my pieces on the queen side as black. Of course, you know, there is a, there's a lot of theory going on. You know, the theory goes all the way to like move 20, 25 uh, at top level. And uh, most of them are quite forced. Knight c6 just doesn't make a lot of sense. Because right now you're not going to be able, you're going to ha have difficulties gaining, uh, con gaining control over, over the queen side and creating your own counterplay. And you're just going to have to suffer because of white's space advantage on the king side. So after knight c6, white is just simply better. Bishop to b4, another very strange move. You're basically just helping me create my uh, my pawn chain, you know, uh, but he played bishop d2, which I don't agree with. I would play c3 in this position. I would play c3, then put my bishop on e3, despite the fact that this bishop is more or less closed. Um, it could potentially play a very important role in the future, because at some point I'm going to start my expansion on the queen, on the king side, and I'm going to create a lot of holes, a lot of dark square holes. So this bishop on e3, despite the fact that it's locked for the moment, it has a very bright future. What if you get bishop to g5, by the way? In what position? Bishop. Oh, it's black. Screen. It's check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Black checked on a, a okay. bishop b4, and now bishop d2 or c3. And um, also, I mean, Technically, c3 should be a better, uh, a better response because who has the space advantage? White. Do we want to exchange pieces when we have space advantage? No. We want to keep as many pieces as possible on the board because it's going to be more difficult for our opponent uh, to maneuver his pieces. See, he has less space, um, and if he has more pieces, then he has even less space. So uh, as a rule in general, whenever you have space advantage, you don't want to exchange pieces. That's why I would keep the bishop uh, on c1 and further on e3. OK, he played bishop d2. Knight e7. Ah, OK. We keep the very good, good move. c3 is a very good move. Of course, black should have taken on d2 immediately and then played knight to e7. or try to attack and open the position with f6. Actually, I think that's what he should do. Just go something like this, and f6, attack the <coughs> pawn on e5, take advantage of the fact that after e takes f6, which I'm not sure is forced, I don't think it's forced, uh, knight takes f6, 
knight c3 to defend against knight e4, and then somehow he has to make e5 work. Somehow he has to uh, play e5 as soon as possible, and if he manages to do that in, in a favorable situation, then the position is going to be very, very close to equality. So black almost equalized, despite his very shady play. <laughs> well, both sides kind of played uh, shady. Well, not so. Well, white played, except e5, which at, at move number two, except that everything was fine. And bishop d2, c3, which should have been a much better move. Um, so knight e7, c3, bishop a5. Now black, I think, is borderline close, uh, lost. B4, white has space advantage on both sides. That's terrible news for black. Very, very, very difficult position. B5. Again, unprovoked. Unprovoked change of structure. Uh, when these pawns on, on the dark squares are controlling the bishop so well, why would you put your bishop, uh, why would you put your pawn on a uh, light square and actually allowing my knight to jump on the important c4 square? Absolutely no reason. So if you really wanted to play b5 at some point, you should have waited for, for black to provoke it with a5. Once again, wait for your opponent to provoke changes before you engage in them. Structural changes generally cannot be taken back. So you have to be extremely careful with them. Um, in this situation, you have much more important uh, things to do in the position. Bishop d3, for example, develop your pieces, castle, and start your pawn storm. I would say bishop d3, then knight g5, f4, and so on, right? You have to, you have to move fast. And if black plays a5, then sure, you're probably going to have to play b5. But as we can see, he also took his uh, square away from the knight. He doesn't have knight a5 anymore. He cannot get to this knight c4 square. So he is still having huge, huge problems getting his pieces out. b5, big inaccuracy. Even the computer says, big inaccuracy. Oh, best move was bishop d3. OK, I didn't even read that. I didn't, I, I, I'm thinking like the computer. I'm in good shape. <laughs> Castle, bishop d3, knight to f5. OK. I would play h4 or g4 here. Let's see what you played. I think g4. g4 is interesting. Ah, yeah, h4 was the move. I guess. Play the move queen e2. Wait, but queen e2 allows knight b3, right? Or even a6. No, knight b3 makes a lot of sense. Whoa, what is this? h4? What about the rook? Yeah. <laughs> what <would> the <laughs> yes. Uh, so after h4, the rook was lost, and I think the game was soon lost, we will see in just a second. No, but what is queen e2 doing? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Um, you have to play according to your plan. You, you, you have to, to abide by a certain plan, you know, you cannot play one move there, one move according to that plan, one move according to the other plan. You kind of need some, uh, you know, some course of action in, in your thought process. And in this position, yeah, queen e2 just doesn't make a lot of sense. I thought about h4 because initially I wanted to play g4 and expand on the king side. The problem with g4 is that it allows knight h4. Very often, whenever we have the knight on f5, queen on d8, this is a kind of a well-known and studied pattern. I'm going to be able to stop your expansion by placing that knight on h4. 
So that's why I want to play h4 first. And then my threat is g4. Push your knight back, gain even more space, and ultimately I'm just simply going to crush you with my pawns. Slowly, slowly crush you with the pawns. Your king is going to be in big, big trouble. And you don't have any counterplay. Well, that's actually, uh, that's actually not that true because you played this move b5, which was a, was a bad move. And now knight c4 might come on the board. So it's not as easy for white, but certainly h4 should be the right move. Queen e2 was played, knight b3, h4, terrible move. Watch your, uh, watch your pieces, yeah? Don't forget about rooks. Knight takes a1, h5, okay. Valiant effort, try to attack on the king side. You have to do something, you have to create some sort of counterplay. Um, I mean, White just lost a lot of material. So if he doesn't find the counterplay, then he's going to be able to resign in no time. Knight to b3. Why bishop f4? Why bishop f4? Why not g4? Right. Now it, it seems like White started thinking about which exchanges are better. Um, the problem is that he was afraid of knight xd2, I would assume. Problem is I would play g4. And even if you take on d2, uh, I'm going to take with the queen. And then my queen is going to be able to come towards the, towards the potential, potentially weak dark squares. Yeah, so for example, just, uh, just to give you an example, knight to e7 to defend the knight. And right now, maybe I can play something like h6 and then queen f4. I'm threatening to play queen f6. Okay. Suddenly, you don't have any space for the knight. Right? So, actually, I did get some sort of counterplay, I guess, as white. I think the best move in this position is to play something like f5. OK, I'm going to take this. And still, is not game over, yeah? Because this knight is just doesn't have any squares. Um, Black is struggling a little bit with his pace. But time, uh, time efficiency is extremely important. If you start playing moves such as bishop f4 and you allow me to rearrange my pieces, find squares for, for, for them, then you're just going to be a rook down. Yeah? You have to remember the material situation and assess what you have to do based on that. So he played bishop f4. F6, bad move. Why is it a bad move? Well, mm. mistake, okay, I mean, it says mistake here, but uh, I wouldn't call it a mistake. I, I, I would definitely not call it a mistake. I don't see the refutation. I don't see the immediate refutation. I would assume the computer annotated it as a mistake because there's simply just a much better option in the position. Nevertheless, even after f6, uh, black is completely winning. Black is completely winning. He's a rook up. Okay. He's a rook up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's completely winning since white decided to give away his rook for no reason <laughs> on a1. Um, g4. Another huge mistake, according to this. Well, okay. Yeah, f takes, f takes c5, I guess, was just winning. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because why is f takes, actually, why is f takes e5 a good move? Why is f takes e5 a good move and not knight, knight e7? I think knight e7 is uh, a sign of question mark. Uh, of course, the position is still winning, but as, uh, as uh, the annotation point out, I think f takes e5 is better. But the question is why? So why is that a good move in comparison with knight e7? <laughs> yes. Let's just go along with the most probable uh, 
course of action, which would be, I would say, bishop takes e5. That's an interesting move. Could even be the, be the best move in the position. I don't know the exact objective evaluation. Uh, and I, yeah, maybe knight h6 is good. What I was thinking is knight d6. Um, but similar idea. Yeah, I just want to put either my knight on f7 to defend, um, to defend my kingside or just put the knight on e4. Sacrifice a pawn, eliminate some pieces, eliminate some of your important attackers and then just enjoy my extra rook. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I do like knight h6 a little bit better because I wasn't really sure what to do against h6. I was a little bit afraid of this move. Knight c1 possibly? Ah. Ah, very interesting. I'm, 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 I'm afraid. I'm very scared. I'm very, very scared. Now it's too late, I think. Yeah. Now it's too late. It, way too much counterplay. Yeah. We cannot allow that. Uh, that's why I don't like knight d6, actually. That's why I think knight, knight h6, or even knight c1 here. Why shouldn't we play knight c1 here? No. Mm -hmm. Ah, very good. Consequence of the move, bishop takes e5. The c1 square is no longer protected. So knight c1 is the next row option, absolutely. We play knight c1, we exchange on d3, then we reroute the knight when, wherever we want. I would say knight d6, knight to e4, since that's a newly uh, available square for us. And the position is completely winning. So yes, f takes e5 was better. Knight to e7 was played. Black is still winning. Queen c2. I mean, at this point, yeah, whatever the computer is saying, inaccuracy. White cannot really make a lot of inaccuracies. He's lost. He just, he needs to find some sort of uh, initiative. f5. f5. Wow. Giving the knight just like that? Is that good? Ah, yeah, it, it is good. It is good. Wow. Yeah, this is a very bad move, I think. Um, I think f takes g4 just simply kills the game. Because one of the pieces is going to be lost. Not sure why, what Black was afraid of. I would assume he was afraid of something like knight g5. But after rook takes f4, okay, you take my pawn on h7. Nevertheless, I don't think you have much more than that. Maybe I can go king f8 or even king h8. Hmm? Don't there. Not sure. I think the both of them work. Because the, the rook is guarding, yeah. The rook is guarding, and I'm actually thinking of bringing my queen to f8. Um, try to create some uh, active plan of my own. I, yeah, I don't, I don't see how white can uh, improve his position. The absence of the dark, dark square bishop is very influential. Um, so no, after f takes g4, the game is just simply over. Play the move a6. It's too slow, yeah? It, it, you just lost a piece on b3. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So after f takes g4 in this position. That's a good, that's a good question. Uh, I will take that. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to run away. Queen c2 and I'm going to block that attack of yours. I have this option of just simply blocking. Um, maybe I can even take. Position, don't get greedy. Just block the attack and that's it. Game over. Yeah? He's not doing anything. His knight is far away from the center of the action. Um, he cannot bring his bigger biggest, strongest attacker in the game. 
And if you play something like h6, I think I can just simply respond with g6. Okay, I'll let you put your pawn on h7, but after king f8, I'm, hmm? Thank you for the protection. Thank you for the protection. Of course, I have some weak dark squares, but the problem is you cannot really take advantage of them. At least I don't see how. And um, knight, h knight f7 is protected. The knight on g5 doesn't have anywhere to go, and I only need a couple of moves to get my pieces out and I'm going to enjoy my extra material. So, uh, where were we? Ah, that was your question, but good. As white, probably you should try to think about um, these type of ideas, of course, such as bishop takes h7, create counterplay at all costs. Otherwise, you're just doomed. I mean, you're doomed anyway, but um, maybe you can create some sort of confusion in the position. So a6, again, not, not, not really playing according to plan. You're playing on, uh, on two flanks. You played f5 with an obvious idea behind it to take on g4. And now after he took your, uh, he took your knight, he, he's no longer down material, as much material as he was before. He's only an exchange down. And now you're not taking on g4, trying to uh, regain that piece back. You're playing a6, too slow, way too slow. Queen to c2, okay. Mm -hmm. A takes b5, a takes b5. I would, yeah. I don't, I don't have the engine next to me, but I would take on, uh, on b5 as well. Bishop d7, g5. Okay, h6, very bad move. Oh, yes, absolutely, very bad move. Uh, why h6? Your position is perfectly, finally, your position is perfectly safe. Finally, as black, you have absolutely nothing to worry on the king side. If he plays h6, you play g6. If he, play g, if, if he plays g6, you play h6. You have absolutely nothing to worry. Right now, all you need to worry is about opening up the queen side. Instead of that, you decide to play h6. Not good, not good. Uh, hmm? uh, I see panic written all over this. You know, uh, some, you, you see these pawns advancing in front of you and you kind of uh, start panicking. No reason to panic. Whenever you have these pawns like this facing each other, um, Again, whenever he moves one pawn, you push the other and you close the position completely. And you just want to play on the kings on the queen side. Yeah? That's where your superior pieces are. Your rook on a8, he doesn't have a rook on the a file and so on. So h6. G takes h6. G6. Yeah, I mean white is starting to to feel better, to feel like he's better a little bit. And now comes the big blunder, knight g5, okay. Hmm? Yeah. Rook a5. H7, okay, king h8. H takes g6. Yeah, it's not that easy to find, um, to find a way into black's position, despite the fact it looks like you're very, very close to checkmating him. Problem is you don't, you don't have enough pieces. And I do have quite a, quite a few defenders around my king. The knight being especially a very strong defender around the king. So after h takes g6, knight takes g6. Queen to e2. He must have forgotten about the bishop on f4, right? Because after knight takes f4, I think... It's finally time to resign. No, no, no resignation. Queen takes you, that's the problem. You're losing too many pieces. You're losing all your pieces. You're not losing only the, the bishop on f4. Um, ah, rook g1, okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> he was uh, kind of committing uh, 
suicide, uh, throwing his pieces at his opponent, hoping that, I don't know, Black will just uh, forget about <laughs> playing chess. <laughs> uh, maybe it was a blitz game, I'm not sure. No, it says rated classical, classical game. Okay, Rook G1 is a bit disrespectful, I have to admit. <laughs> if I would see Rook G1, I would be like, are you really still playing? Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean everything wins. Everything wins. Absolutely everything wins. Um, but obviously, I mean, Rook Queen takes G1 has to win a little bit faster than that. Just eliminate all the pieces from the board. Um, I, I I I assume so. I I think so. Yeah, I think uh, he was trying to be cute. Queen takes G1. Well. Okay. And finally, we have the resignation. He can't throw any more pieces. There's, there's no more pieces to throw at your opponent. And I think um, bishop b5 is just simply coming with a lot of che yeah, checkmates in a couple of moves. So um, that was a viewer's choice. Thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you next week.